Hi, this is Minez Marie, the soldier of Mary. I wanted to talk today about disposing of religious articles. Now, if you're anything like me, this is a question that has dogged my mind for a long time. Although, you know, as I'm going to say in this video, I've got some helpful resolutions to the issue. I remember when I returned back to my Catholic faith when I was 17 or something, and I I remember reading about the disposal of religious articles and basically every Catholic on YouTube seems to be repeating this. Religious articles can only be disposed, can only be thrown away by being burned or buried. And quite often people say on the internet, so this is a very easy way to get rid of your religious articles. But it isn't. Not if, like me, you live in a city. Not if I don't have any fire. I don't have any fires around. Um, you know, and burying. There's actually very little grass, even. You know, it's not as easy as you might think to burn and bury religious items. Furthermore, the idea of burning and burying that belongs in an age, I think where there were far, far fewer printed holy objects. And, you know, I am someone that likes to be very consistent. So by holy object, I don't just draw a line at a holy card that has been blessed by a priest or, or maybe a brown scapula that has been blessed or, or a statue of Our Lady. A holy item, the way I see it, is anything that has a image, an image of Our Lady, of Our Lord, of the saints, any sacred image, that is a holy object. How can that be? How can they be disposed? Okay, so number one, you can burn the items, you can bury the items, but let's get to the point behind burning and burying. The point about about both of them, really, but mainly the, let's mainly stick with the burning one. The point is, blessing the blessing of an object does not does not change the thing irreversibly in the order of being. It doesn't change it irreversibly, and something loses its blessing when it no longer, in any meaningful way is the thing that has been best. So burning the item, it quite obviously stops the object from being the object that was blessed, right? So you've got a holy picture of the Sacred Heart. It's burned, and what that means is it now is, com it's no longer identifiable as a picture of the Sacred Heart, and so it can be disposed of. So Disposal of holy objects is getting at stopping the object from having the likeness of the, the thing that was blessed. Something's, something loses its blessing when it no longer is the thing that was blessed. You got that? I think that was clear enough. So, by extension, this is where we get to the important point. Burning breaks down an object to dust. It breaks down an object to its to con to very basic components. And so by extension, I think quite legitimately, we can dispose of blessed uh, paper objects and plastic objects by shredding them, by shredding them. And this is what I have been doing for the last um, 15 years. And the reason why this is much better, because, like, for instance, what do you do with Christmas cards, which have got our Lord on the front, and, and beautiful pictures of the saints? You can't just chuck them in the bin. The reason why you can't just chuck these things in the bin is because it's disrespectful to them. I think, you know, in one sense, you might find it disrespectful to throw away, uh, just throw away a picture of your loved one, you know, just to chuck that out with the trash. There's a certain sense that that's, that's a bit uh, disrespectful. Or it would feel it would wouldn't feel quite right, um, or you would you know let's not extend that analogy too much. But 
the point is that Our Lady, Our Lord, they're so holy, they're such holy personages, we don't just treat their resemblances um, dishonorably. And just chucking something into the landfill site or to be filtered through a recycling plant along with all the rubbish there, the genuine rubbish, it's not right. But if you shred uh, these uh, Christmas card images, if you shred the images on them, they lose, their, they lose their likeness to our Lord. And if they were blessed cards, they lose their blessing. The blessing is gone because the items are no longer the ones that were blessed. So that's my first method of disposal of holy objects. You shred them. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for, for um, 15 years, and it has brought me in an immense degree of relief. Because I carried with myself, when I was 18, or I, I discovered this ruling, and I was so scrupulous about the throwing away of objects, I had a black bag of holy objects that were slightly damaged or no longer desired, or that I just gathered from different places. Um, because I thought, well, they shouldn't just be thrown away. So I gathered them myself. And then I entered seminary, and I went to university, then entered seminary, and all the while I was carrying this black bag with me, full of religious articles, thinking, when will I ever get to burn them? When will I ever get to bury them? I, and in fact, on one occasion, on a rare occasion, we were burning items in, in our back garden. It's very rare. We live in London. We, we didn't have any real reason to have fires, bonfires in the garden, but for one reason, on one occasion we were, and I thought, now is my moment. And I remember the disappointment when so many of the articles failed to burn. They failed to break down. They were just sitting there in the fire, and I had to take them out of the fire and put them back into the black bag. And so the black bag contained not only <laughs> religious articles, it, it contained partially charred religious articles, and like I alluded to earlier, so many holy cards are now plastic laminated. You can't just burn them. They don't burn. You've got to have a super hot fire or whatever. So my recommendation is you use your shredder. There are other things that you can do. That's not my only recommendation. Another one. This is going to be sound... Um, it's going to be sound... On the first uh, hearing, it sounds... Uh, bit counterintuitive, but so does burning. The idea of burning holy things, burning a Bible, it sounds like an evil thing to do, but it's a good thing because you're doing it with the intention of, of breaking it down so it's no longer the item that was blessed. So sometimes you can dispose of holy objects by using a pair of scissors. This is what I would do for a brown scapula. I would get the brown scapula and with a pair of sharp scissors cut it up into loads of little pieces and then throw it away. Once you have, once you've cut it up into all the little pieces, it's no longer the brown scapula. It's no longer the item that was blessed. There is no blessing on that now. It's gone. And so you can throw that away. That works with scapulas. It also works with um, other things that don't pass through a shredder easily. Okay, let's talk about another category. A statue. A statue, the idea of burying statues, this is not easy. You live in a high-rise block of flats, and the only bit of garden you've got is a communal one. You know, you can try and go down your local park and bury a statue. Okay, it's not easy, but a lot of statues are made of fiberglass, or they're made of resin, um, plaster. With those statues, you smash them. You smash them up into a thousand pieces so they are no longer the item that was blessed because they lose the blessing. Once you've smashed the statue, and I recommend you put it in a bag and then you uh, get the bag, like a quite a, maybe like a cloth bag or something, you put the statue in a cloth bag you, um, and then you, you use the bag and you chuck the bag against the floor repeatedly until the item is smashed into many pieces. That's a way you can dispose of a statue. What about if the statue is wood? Okay, it's harder to dispose of a wooden statue. Um, but this is now my recommendation for a wooden statue. For a wooden statue, 
you get some, and I've, I've done this, I've done this too. You get some gloss paint. You get some gloss paint, not just some paint that's going to wash off. You get some gloss paint and you cover the statue in this paint. And then I think at that point, it'd be good then if you smashed it in half at least. I think it'd still be good to try and break it in half if you can. Even wooden statues, you know, there are ways and means, even for a person with minimal strength, using doors or using uh, pivot points to, to break a wooden thing in half. You know, you may have a tool to break, you may have a hacksaw, but you know what, if you can't do it, the most important thing is that you cover that statue with gloss paint. And you, you, you cover it so that it can no longer be identified as a statue. And essentially, you want it to be so that this, this is a process that can't be undone. So you want a paint that is going to be basically impossible to remove from the item. And that way, you can then throw that away. Because it is no longer the item that was blessed. It's no longer the image of Our Lady. It's no longer a statue of Our Lady. Obviously, you've got a thing if the statue bears... Um, bears her likeness in her form, then I would recommend that you um, attach things to the statue, maybe cover it with loads of um, dirt or something before you paint it. You, you, you do stuff so that it loses its form. Or some parts are easier to break off than others. Heads, hands, feet, they can often break off. And then you, you make sure that those things, then you make sure that the statue is no longer recognizable as Our Lady, and it's covered in this paint, um, and and you try and uh, break it as much as you can, and then throw it away. This is um this these are my alternatives to this rather burdensome. And if you're like me, and I don't wouldn't say that I tend to total scrupulosity, but I'm somebody who wants to honour God and wants to honour the sacred things. And and maybe maybe you've been the same, and you've stressed over this burying and burning, and you've been like, well, how, what do I do? How do I get out of this? My house is full of religious clutter. Um, maybe when I die, someone else will do it for me. When you die, most likely some godless relative of yours will, you know, if you're unfortunate, will just chuck them down the landfill. So you can do your best by by shredding, by uh, painting by using scissors, by smashing, and then throwing them away so that they no longer bear the likeness of our Lord, of our Lady, of the saints. This is what I recommend. One final thought is we have in England, we have a charity, the Crown of Thorns, that takes religious items to uh, poorer countries. And I've used that as well. I've used that to dispose of things. Even they'll take holy cards, they'll take rosaries that are broken yeah rosaries that are broken there's another one i didn't mention that you've got a broken rosary um with the broken rosary you pull it to pieces all the beads so that all the beads are split apart and you throw them away the difficulty here are the two medallions the crucifix and the uh, little uh, maybe our lady medallion that links the decades and i've got to say this is something where I'm still in a bit of trouble over. The, the medallions and the mini crucifixes that are made of metal. These are hard to dispose of. And I've got to say, I've got a, I've got a collection of them because these do, do not, um, you can't deal with them. The scissors can't normally help you. Uh, I guess with this, maybe you could go down the paint route. You could with the, with the metal. Uh, because the gloss would completely cover up any image. The crucifix, possibly, although the form might be might be visible. I think I would go for a combination of paint. What I have done in the past is I've been able to snap some of these things using a pair of pliers um, or using a door, you know, or a hinge of a door or something, and snap them in half a few times. That's that's a way of dealing with them. Or you know, these are much smaller, so the burying option is much more viable with these mini, mini little bits. But rosary beads, break the beads, chuck the, the individual's beads away. The blessing has gone when the item is no longer the one that was blessed. 
Okay, it's a strange video, I know, but this is something that I felt cool. I felt I should do a video on just because no one else has offered these suggestions. You just get burn and bury, burn and bury, and um, for me that is an oppressive. Uh, it's an oppressive uh, demand that um, that doesn't need to be maintained because, by extension, the principles established in let me just recapitulate. The principle established in burn is you break the thing down, um, you break the thing down into its smallest parts, because breaking the thing down from the object that was blessed into the parts of the object that was blessed means that the item is no longer blessed. It's no longer the item. That is extended in shredding, in using a pair of scissors, in smashing. The burying concept. Well, I think the paint. I think the paint is similar to the burying concept because the burying concept is this has been this has been removed totally from sight. This no you no longer see this item. It's been um, um, and ultimately the, that's kind of there in the, the gloss paint. And so although that item that is covered with gloss paint will be will go to a landfill, it's no longer the item that was blessed. It no longer bears the likeness, the likeness of Our Lady. It no longer has that um, effect on us to help us to focus in prayer. Um, it's just a random object, and so it, it can uh, we can without any scruples uh, follow this course of action. I think this is still this is still important because we should just, but we shouldn't just throw items away. That's most definitely true. The, the holy items shouldn't just be disposed of in the same way you dispose of um, eggshells or, you know, catalogs that you get in the post or tea bags or whatever it is, um, broken cup. They've got to be disposed properly. And we, as pre priests, should put in their newsletters and, and announce occasionally that um, how, how objects should be disposed of. You could even leave at the back of your church a, a box for people to put religious items that, that, that should be disposed of. Um, I believe once upon a time, you know, I believe once upon a time there were such boxes in, in churches, but basically they, they don't exist now. Okay, may Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.